Having the ability to track user activity in Qualtrics can be invaluable, especially in situations where you want to know if they clicked on a link or a button in your survey. There's only so much you can do by default in Qualtrics, but if you're willing to put in a little bit of code, it can make all the difference. In this video, I'm going to show you how I added a link to my survey to an external web page and how I tracked whether people clicked on it. Essentially, I have a brief survey about transportation regulations, and if they just click the link, they'll have all the information they need. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so nothing too sophisticated here. What I have is this link right here, and I use a little HTML for that. So you can kind of see right here. Essentially, what it's doing is it's going to open up a new tab and open up that page I just showed you. So what we want to do is we want to give this an ID, and that's the key to all of this. So we're just going to call this... Uh, I don't know, my link one, okay? And you wanna go ahead and highlight this and copy it because we're gonna need this in a second. And we're gonna create a variable called track. So zero for no, one for yes, if they click on this. All right, so what you wanna do now is you wanna go to survey flow and you wanna add a new element here and you wanna go to embedded data and we're gonna make our own thing here called it track. Okay, we're gonna set a value, zero. Okay, so it should look like this, track equals zero. And what you wanna do is you want to switch these. So we want to move this below. All right, I want this on top. All right, perfect. You can either hit apply down here or just hit yes like I did here and then move on here. All right, let's click on this JavaScript part here. And this is only two lines, so this isn't going to take us very long. And earlier I mentioned you want to copy something. There's that right there. I'll make sure you put this in quotes. All right, just one more line here. And let's put it in our new track variable to see if someone clicked on it. And one if they did. And this should do it. Okay, with this out of the way, let's go ahead and publish the survey and fill out a few mock surveys here. And I'm going to get rid of my full screen here so you can kind of see how the, the tab and all that works. All right, just for fun, let's try it on three browsers and we're going to have one person click on the link and two people not. Okay, so for this first person here, they are going to click on the link. And you can see 49 is the answer that we need there. Okay, so very comfortable. And since they looked at the link, they know it's title 49. And bam, that person's done. All right, same survey. And we're going to say somewhat comfortable. We're not going to click this link here. And we're going to say title 53. All right, this one's done. Now let's go to this one. We're going to say very comfortable. We're going to act like we clicked on this, but we actually did. And we're going to say title 26. All right, let's see what happens. So when you just complete surveys, sometimes it takes a couple of minutes for it to get loaded. If you look right here, you can kind of see that uh, it says one of three responses right there. So it takes a little bit, maybe a couple of minutes. So maybe get a thing of coffee and come right back. All right, so it looks like we have three rows here. So instead of individually looking at them, I'm just going to go ahead and export them. Let's download it. Yeah, the formatting is not going to really matter. I would just do a CSV or an Excel file just for simplicity purposes. So let's go ahead and open this up here and let's see what we got. Right off the bat, you can see one for the person that clicked on the link and zero for the two people that did not. So that worked. That's great. We can track this. It's interesting that the spam is on there twice, you can see in, uh, you know, rows five and six, and that might just be because we filled this survey out so quickly. And I changed these IP addresses here, but it might have been because the IP address were the same. So don't be alarmed by that. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or thoughts for future videos, or if you just have questions. In the meantime, thanks for watching and subscribing and take care.